Lord, I was lost in sin. No one Jesus took me in. And in a little life from heaven filled my soul. Lord, he made my heart in love. And he wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell it all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer my mind. When you feel a little power turning and you know that the fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my past seems true, Lord, without the ray of cheer, and then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. Oh, the mist of sin may rise, Lord, and hide those starry skies, but just a little talk with Jesus clears away. And let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. Have your way this morning, Lord. Have your way. Worship him today, church. Worship him today. Oh, and you know a little fire is burning. He will find a little talk with Jesus. Make play it, John Brooks. Have your way. We ought to worship the Lord while we're in here today, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you come today you with trouble, you don't have to leave with trouble. Amen. Jesus is in this place today. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I was lost in sin. Oh, but Jesus took me in. And then let a lie from heaven fill my soul. Lord, he paid my heart in love. And he wrote my name above. And just a little tongue with Jesus clears the way. Tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our plans cry. He will answer by and by. When you feel a little purple turning and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our plans cry. He will answer by and by. Oh, You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Well, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a good hand this morning. Luke chapter 19. <coughs> Luke 19, the Bible said, verse number 1, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was uh, the chief. Notice the Bible said the chief. He wasn't one of the chiefs. He was the chief, uh, was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus. I mean, that's the wisest thing anybody could ever do is, <laughs> is seek Jesus. Y'all quiet this morning. I don't need y'all to be quiet on me. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the press, uh, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. Verse number three again, we will take a thought from there. Uh, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. Emma Gilbert, I'm going to read this verse one more time, and Dad's going to ask you a question, okay? It ain't a trick question, all right, I promise you. Amen. He sought to see Jesus. So Zacchaeus was going to see Jesus, but he could not because of the press, which was a crowd. The Bible said Zacchaeus couldn't get to Jesus because of the crowd, because he was little of stature. So, Emma, honey, what was the reason why Zacchaeus couldn't get to Jesus? Uh, because he was short. Amen, I kind of had a feeling she'd say that. 
uh, we want to preach the thought to you just for a minute. What stops you from getting to Jesus? What stops you from getting to Jesus? Y'all can stand, y'all can run, you can shout, you can dance, you can run outside if you want to as long as the Holy Ghost is in it. What stops you from getting to Jesus? Now, the Bible teaches me about this, this man, Jesus. He's now passing through, uh, through Jericho. And the Bible says that there was a, a man that was chief among the publicans. And y'all know what a publican is, right? They were a tax collector. They were somebody that was hired by Rome. And they would, amen, they would uh, collect taxes from people. Amen. And they would pay uh, the, the tribute that they got. They would pay to Rome. But a lot of them, they would skim off the top for their sales. They were kind of crooked. Amen. Kind of like the IRS. Amen. <laughs> Hope none of y'all work for the IRS because I done made you mad. I didn't mean to. Amen. But nobody likes to get their paycheck and look and see what you should have brought home and see what you actually bring home. Does, it, does anybody like this? I don't like to see that. And they're kind of depressing. But this, this middleman was Zacchaeus. He was the one. So not only was he uh, a publican, but he was a chief among all of them. And the Bible said that he was a very rich man. But something happened. I don't, the Bible doesn't give me record of what happened or why that he desired to see Jesus. But the Bible said that he sought to see Jesus. Meaning, thank you, honey. Meaning that he had a desire in him to see Jesus. Maybe he'd heard about him. And then maybe he had uh, amen, heard of stories and maybe even seen miracles. But he wanted to get to the place to where Jesus was. And the Bible said that now while Jesus is passing through Jericho that amen, Zacchaeus runs up amen, to the place where Jesus was going to be passing by. And the Bible said that Zacchaeus could not get to where Jesus was because of the crowd. Now, a lot of people would, an would answer the question this morning. I thank God that Emma didn't answer it wrong. But a lot of people would answer the reason why that Zacchaeus couldn't get to Jesus was because the crowd was in the way. And how he knows that wasn't the reason. And a lot of times today we want to shift the blame and put the blame on other reasons as to why that we can't get to the Lord. But I come to tell you, we should, amen, realize, amen, where the focus ought to be placed upon and realize today that it's not the crowd's fault that I cannot get to Jesus. But if I really want to get to where he's at, I will have a determination inside of me. Can you say amen? Because we will be determined to do a lot of things in our life. Hey, man, I know this ain't a message y'all going to run and shout a whole lot on, but that's all right because we're going to teach you today. We're going to learn some things. Hey, man, because I want you to examine your own life today and, what is, and ask yourself, what is keeping me from getting to the place where I need to be in Jesus? Now, I'm not talking about a physical place, amen, because Jesus is not here physically. But I'm talking about what is your hindrances today in your spiritual life with God? What prevents you from getting to the place where you have such a closeness in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I know the crowd, amen, maybe had a lot, maybe had a little bit to do with it, but ultimately Zacchaeus, amen, was very short. He was a man of small stature, so the reason lied in him. Amen, so he had to be determined to get around the crowd, but I gotta stop and talk about the crowd just for a minute, because how many knows Refuge Church of God we're gonna be, amen, we're gonna be laughed at, we're gonna be mocked, we're made fun of, amen, I've already had it happen to me. Why? Because they say, why in the world, amen, do you care about homeless people? Why do you care? Amen. About these little kids walking by the school every day. Why, why do you care about drug addicts? Why do you care about homosexual? Why do you care about those men and women? Amen. Out here. Amen. With no hope. And I say because the Bible said that Jesus came to seek and to save. Amen. That which was lost. I know they don't have any money. I know they don't have. Amen. Anything. Amen. Brother Travis that we would think of naturally to offer the church. But I come to tell you that they got a whole lot to offer the church because what God really wants from everybody is their heart. Amen. I'm tired of the church today. Amen. It's got another agenda other than seeing people saved. And I know they're going to look at us, honey, like we're crazy. I know they're going to say, what kind of people is that down there at Refuge Church of God? But can I tell you today, we ought not let the crowd, amen, discourage us from doing what God has told us to do. What are we going to do then, Brother Jack? Amen. We're going to stand up and we're going to say God has sent me amen to change my city I don't care if everybody laughs at me I don't care if everybody said 
I'm crazy. But that man walking down the road, he needs Jesus. How do you know he needs Jesus? I talked to him this morning, and he said, I need to be saved. Hey, man, look at him. There he goes. He told me, he said, I need to be saved. I said, young man, this house is open for you. I know he don't have much to offer me, but it ain't about offering me anything. But it's about seeing somebody pull from the hand of hell. It's about seeing somebody and be gloriously saved, born again. It's time we get the voice of the crowd out of our ear. I know we might be crazy, but bless God, I'll be crazy for Jesus Christ. The crown, the crown, the crown. What hinders you from getting to Jesus? Some of y'all got family that hinders you in your walk with the Lord. Some of you do. Some of you sitting in this congregation today, you got voices from other people that hinders you in your walk. And I'm going to get right down to where it hurts just a little bit. Because how many knows that after the Lord saved me, Brother Travis, the people that I ran with were different. Y'all ain't going to help me now. A lot of times we are allowing the crowd to hinder us because we are associating ourselves with the wrong people. Huh? Amen, preacher. I love y'all. What are you saying? I'm saying today, I mean, also, what, you will become what you are with and what you are around. Why should you never take an ex-drug addict and put him in the middle of a crack house? Huh? Because the temptation is very, very great. Can you say amen? A lot of you, all, some of y'all, I don't know who you are today. I'm just obeying the Holy Ghost. I prayed and the Lord, Lord told me some things last night. Some of you are with people that are hindering you in your walk with the Lord. Why? Come here, Brother Travis. I mean, come here, Brother David. God says that one of you get on one side of me and one of you on the other. Because there is a little, have you ever played tug of war when you was little? So you, some of you kids don't even know what tug of war and they don't even know what that is. Yeah. If it ain't on your tablet, you ain't never played it. <laughs> Amen. Grab this arm, Brother Travis. Grab, grab this one, Brother David. There is a literal tug of war because Brother Travis represents the life that I used to live. And Brother David represents the life that the Lord wants me to live now. Amen. But God has called us all to holiness. He has called us to a place where we will sanctify ourselves. In it. Oh, Lord, not sanctification. Grab a hold of me, Brother Dave. Amen. So the world is pulling me this way. Amen. And I got a struggle going on inside of me. There is a crowd of people that's now pulling me back to the way that I was. All along, there is a struggle inside of me. Christ is pulling me this way. But some of you today, amen, you wrestle with temptation because there's a tug of war in your life. Amen. Why? Because, amen, that joker used to run around with. You don't need to run around with him anymore. You need to love him. You need to tell him about Jesus but you need to say, buddy, my life has changed. I don't smoke pot anymore. I don't do drugs anymore. I don't talk that way. I live for Jesus. I come to tell you it's time to change the crowd. <laughs> Hallelujah. That all right? Huh? That didn't hurt nobody's feeling, did it? I don't want to do that, but i got to tell you the truth. Because some of you are being pulled in ways you shouldn't be pulled. And it's causing you to be hindered in getting to Christ. In your relationship with Him. Oh, but let me tell you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've heard preachers tell me, I called you crazy, man. You're crazy. I asked a man of God one day, I said, what is your vision? What is your vision? And I was expecting to hear one answer. That my, my vision is to see people come to Jesus. My vision is to see people be saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And God make evangelists out of everybody in the house that they would go and win souls to the Lord. But that wasn't his vision. His vision was all about the building. His vision was all about the, the earthly things. And I said, that's not what my vision is. And I hear the voice of people telling refuge. I'm just going to be as transparent with you as I know how to be. I have had people that tell me they love me, that they're so close to me. And they tell me I am so bad out of God's will, it's not even funny. Why? I don't know. 
I have no idea, but I got a vision to see every single Xanax dried up from the street of London. I got, hallelujah, there's still one place, I guess maybe even two in London selling alcohol, but I got a vision <laughs> of them having to close the doors. <laughs> Why? Because refuge? No. <laughs> but I want to see them in the refuge church of God. <laughs> and they say, I don't want them on the bar stool anymore. <laughs> I'm having to deal with voices, <laughs> but I come to tell you, I can't let the crowd hinder me. <laughs> Somebody said, Zacchaeus, you'll never get to where Jesus is. <laughs> Or two little men, but I come to tell you, little as much when God is in it, God will take somebody that's willing to get a hold of Him and He'll turn the world upside down with Him. Is anybody in this house determined to get close to you? My God, you ought to be off your feet. I feel like running. Is anybody in this house want to be closer to the Lamb of God? I gotta get to Jesus. But I gotta leave the crowd behind me. I gotta leave the crowd behind me because they're pulling me and they're hindering me. Hallelujah. I know it's hard. I know it's hard to dismiss people out of your lives. Huh? Some of y'all are mad at me already. But I love you. I love you. You need to change who you run with, mamas and daddies. If you're letting your kids run around with, with kids. Other kids that you know they're in sin, stop it. Stop it. I love you enough to tell you that today. Because every single thing you <laughs> everything you deposit into them with the word of God, you allow them to go in the world and the world to get their hands on them. I'm telling you right now, children, y'all might not love me when this sermon's over, but I come to tell you, moms and dads. We ought to keep them away from the crowd. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, amen, as long as they're under your roof, they ought to live by your rules. You ought to have them in the house of God. You ought to keep them. <laughs> Ain't nobody helping me today. Amen, I come to tell you. I, somebody might say, preacher, I don't know how to do it. My kids are so far gone. i tell you how to do it. Amen, you got to first be saved, be filled with the Holy Ghost, and then pray, God, I need you to Show me how to do it. I, I want my kids, uh, amen, to get to Jesus. Uh, help me, God, to get the crowd uh, out of the light uh, that's hindering them. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, teach me how to be a parent that their life will be changed and they'll get to Jesus. Give the Lord a good hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, no, say the biggest problem why we don't get to Jesus is me. Huh? Me. Amen? <laughs> Thank you, Brother Travis. You are the biggest reason why you don't get to Christ. Y'all love me? Yeah. Hallelujah. And I, I prayed and I asked the Lord some things last night. I said, Lord, what, what's causing people not to get... And we can easily look and say worldliness and say we're too wrapped up in the world. And yeah, but that's like the elephant in the room. That's the elephant in the room. We know that. People are, by and large, way too worldly. Where Steve, they want better this and better that and better this and better that and never really want anything else in Christ. If he is not first, then he is last. Because huh? he don't play second fiddle to nobody. He's either Lord at all or Lord not at all. So we can't be worldly. Give the Lord a good hand on that. Huh? Shauna will vouch for this. Well, no, she can't really vouch. I didn't know her then. I don't, I don't guess. But before the Lord saved me, y'all going to laugh at me. I know you're going to laugh at me. I had a dream of being a Nashville star. Nobody laughed. That's good. I heard one, Sister May. I had a dream that I wanted to be a Nashville star. I wanted to sing country music, and I wanted to live on the streets of Nashville, and I wanted to be rich, and I wanted to be popular, and I wanted to be famous. I wanted to have a mansion on the hill. I wanted it all. And I worked, and I practiced, and I slaved, making sure I got the voice exactly right, and make sure I played the guitar exactly right. And then all of a sudden, I meet this 
right uptown. They're having, they got two Nashville record scouts in town. Two men from Nashville Records. I said, here's my opportunity, baby. And I'm going to take advantage of it. So I put a little group together, and I went and played. And, man, I'm telling you what, I sang Garth Brooks and Keith Whitley like nobody could sing them. And I walked off that stage, and I felt so good about myself. And that man put his arm around me and said, Claude Gilbert, you have got a future in Nashville, Tennessee. Man, I walked out like I had the life by the horns. But what I didn't know, and I had a mom and dad back at home. I was buried in the prayer closet. Because they wanted the whole thing to fall apart. Come on. I don't know why I'm telling this. The Holy Ghost knows. Seems kind of like a left field, but I remember I come home and I was so happy. Mom and Dad, my dreams are coming true. Mom and Dad's discouraged. This is on a Saturday. They're so discouraged. But yet, I know that they were praying. I've heard them tell me they were praying. So I go to church the next morning and the next night on Sunday night. Dad's preaching. I have no idea what he's preaching about. Nothing. I have no idea. Well, all I know is when he gave the altar call, I felt the hand reach right down in my chest and start squeezing my heart. And I said, oh, Lord, what is that? I hadn't felt the call of God like that in a long time, Brother Travis. And there God was pulling me and tugging me to an altar. Hallelujah. And I didn't know anything else to do but let go of my seat and make my way down to an altar. Hallelujah. And I begin to just pour my heart out to God. And I'm, I don't know how long. I might have been there five minutes or an hour and five minutes. I don't know. But when I came up, I was a brand new man. I had been changed. Amen. I didn't crave the same things that I craved before. I didn't want the world. I wanted to live for Jesus. I got home and I'm the next morning I called that man Steve. I said, Steve, let me tell you something. I said, God has saved me this weekend. This is a man from Nashville Record. I said, God has saved me. And I said, I don't have a desire. I'm in the same country music anymore. I said, but I want to use my voice for God. He said, don't you know there is no money in gospel music. But I heard somebody say working for the Lord doesn't pay much, but the retirement plan is out of this world. I come to tell you, some of you are holding on to things in your past and it's keeping you from getting the it's keeping you from getting to Jesus. It's time you get that crowd out and say, I'm going to hold to Jesus. I don't want the world anymore. I want Jesus. Hallelujah. Let it go. Let the past go. Because you cannot use your voice for God Come on. and then use it for the world. Come on. That's all I got to say about that. Thank you, Jesus. Me, 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 me. But that's the obvious thing, Brother Travis, worldliness creeping into the church and sin. sin cre- a church will not prosper if it's got sin. Come on. Uh, it might prosper if there's sin out here. It might because God will deal with people. But if there's sin up here, it will not work. It won't work. It'll fall. It'll fall. It'll fall. <laughs> Time will tell. Went to church not long ago right here in this town. And I preached the gospel. I preached the message. There is no place like hell. And I walked out of there and I said, Sean, let something not right with that pastor. He is wrong. He's in sin. It took about three years for it to come out. Jesus. But it came out. Jesus. Sin will not prosper. But those are, the, those are the elephants in the room. How many knows you can't sin and get to heaven? Come on. Huh? Come on. <laughs> So let's deal, let's, let's deal with something then. Let's deal with something. Somebody says, well, preacher, that means you're perfect. No, sir, no, ma'am, I'm not perfect. But there is a much different, much different, there's a huge gap between me messing up, Brother Travis, and me having a willful sin in my life. Because the Bible says, if you believe in once in grace, please put your seatbelt on so you don't run up out of here. The Bible said, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as a man or some have, but exhorting one, ch- one another, even that much more as you see the day approaching. For, 
For if you willfully sin, that means if I don't come to church and I don't participate in the church and be part of the church, amen, and find my place in the Lord, he said, for if you willfully sin after you come to the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more remission, no more sacrifice for your sin. Can I tell you today, amen, you might have got baptized when you was 11, but are you still on the right way? Are you still on the narrow way? If you got sin in your life, Jesus ain't come to condemn you, but he's come to set you free today. He's come to make you whole and clean you up and put a white garment on you. Okay, so now I got I to deal with a couple things that the Holy Ghost spoke to me last night. Have your way, Holy Ghost. One of the things that hinders you from getting to God and getting into the relationship that you need with Him, and some of you don't even know it, but today God's going to deal with you about it. Have your way, He's going to deal with you. Use Him, God. The Lord spoke this to me last night, and I almost fell off my couch. He said, because some of the people, and he knew who's going to be here today. He said, some of the people are holding grudges in their heart Jesus, Jesus. against other people. Have your way, God. Oh, by the Lord. And it's preventing you from getting where you need to be in Christ. Yeah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Bible said, have you heard? You have heard that it was said by the old time, thou shalt not kill. But he said, <laughs> thank you. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Jesus, Jesus. And whosoever shall say to his brother of Raka, shall be meaning you're empty headed you're air headed you don't know anything shall be in danger of the council hall but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire therefore you got to get this because some of y'all packing around stuff right now that even when you go to your prayer calls that it shows up it's like a lightning bolt flash before your eyes and you feel it in your heart and you see it you know it's there and God said you got to deal with it you got to get this out of your heart you got to get this out of your mind therefore if any <laughs> if thou bring a gift to the altar and there remember that thy brother has an alt against thee leave there thy gift before the altar go thy way and first be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Huh. Y'all got quiet on me now. I must be hitting home with some folk. Because some of y'all packing around some stuff. I know they hurt you. I know they scarred you. And I know they bruised you. But you got to forgive. And you got to let go. Let it go. I've heard that song, I'm crazy. I'm them Ziggy Darty. Let it go. But that's what we got to do today. We gotta let some stuff go. Because Jesus said, Don't you think you can come to this altar and bring a gift to the house of God? Knowing that your brother has an all against you. He said, Leave your gift here, God, and go and make things right with your brother. Make it right with your brother. And after you make things right with your brother, then come to the house of God and lay your offering down. And there you'll meet Christ. Can I tell you, Zacchaeus got to the crowd, but it was not the crowd that was hindering Zacchaeus uh, from getting to where Christ was, uh, but it was Zacchaeus himself. Uh, the disciples said, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother in a day? Uh, he said, seven times. Uh, and Jesus said, no, Peter. He said, 70 times seven. 490 times a day, if that's what it takes. Uh, but you better have forgiveness in your heart before you can come and get to where I'm at. My God, church, we need to let the past go. Let it go. Thank you, sister. Let it go. 
So, are you carrying something around today? That's hindering you? Church hurt. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Church hurt is about the worst hurt you can ever experience in your life. But it will kill you if you let it. Huh? Can I tell you today, and, and I'm going to be honest in my heart, I've got so that I expect the worst out of people. Use them, Lord. Huh? Use them, God. Because it's, it doesn't set me up for failure anymore. For Travis, I love you. I love everybody at Refuge Church of God. <coughs> but if I show up next Sunday and none of y'all here, don't surprise me. I wouldn't be surprised. Use them, God. Because I expect it. So why? Why? Why do you still carry around that hurt with you in your heart for other people? You see them in the grocery store, thank you, and you turn the other way. Huh? Why do you do it? The Bible teaches me. Let me know that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Couple more things. Y'all give me five more minutes. Next thing the Lord spoke to me last night, I said, God, how true that is. He said, one of the things that hinders people in coming close to me is because they remember the times that they failed me. They remember the times I just blatantly chose sin over me. They remember those things and it hinders them from coming to me again. If anybody in this house would say that they've never failed the Lord, I'd have to say you're either a liar or you've been incarnated as Christ in this world. Because all of us in our walk with God, we have failed Him. Yeah. And the moment when God starts drawing you closer and closer, and there's this little ugly fella that sits on your shoulder and he begins to remind you about the things that you did and how you failed God how God would never use you and how God would never use you or, or you because of what you did. Because we've all done things and we're getting somewhere now. Because we've all done things in our Christian life that we are so ashamed of. Does anybody feel like that? I've done some stuff I'm ashamed of. But can I tell you today that when it's been covered by the blood, it is forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. And when it is forgiven, it is forgotten. Huh? Because he said that we will be justified. Justified. Huh? What, does, what does justified even mean? Brother Travis, it means he makes me just if I'd never sinned. He forgets about it. So the things the devil reminded you about, God doesn't even know about them. If you came and you have knelt down and said, God, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to do that again. I don't want to do it again. Use them, God. Help me to turn from the sin that allowed to come in my life right then, God. Help me to turn from it. That's a repentant of heart. That's a sure sign. That somebody said, Claude, how do I know that the Lord is with me and he's, he's willing to forgive me? I said, because you have a repentant of heart. Because huh? if he didn't love you, he never showed you the error that you had. But I'm glad that when he speaks to me, he says, Claude, that wasn't right. And not only that, but he tells me before it even happens, Claude, no. I got how many things does he keep me from? Don't let the devil use your past against your future. Don't let him use your past to keep you from getting to Jesus. I don't care if you have failed him every single day of your life. If you come to this altar today and you make things right with God, he will gloriously forgive you, set you free, and you'll be just as whole as I am today. You'll be just as free as anybody in this house. How do you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to come to close this place. Is whatever you're going to play for altars. 
The Bible said that Jesus is with his disciples and they're eating. The Bible said that Jesus says, every man tonight will be offended because of me. And Peter said, no, Lord, not me. No, everybody else might be, Lord, not Peter. I'll die for you, Jesus. I'll die for you. Jesus said, Peter, this night, before the cock will crow three times, before the cock will crow, you have denied me three times, Peter. Peter said, no, Lord, no. And they go to the garden and they're praying here all of a sudden. They come to get Jesus and they be, to take him away and Peter draws a sword out of a sheath and he takes off the ear of one of the soldiers and it falls to the ground and Jesus said, Peter, put up your sword. And Jesus reaches to the ground and he grabs that ear of oh, that man that's ultimately going to kill him. That man is going to spit on him and beat him and he puts it back on him. And he heals that man. My God, I want to be like Jesus. That's forgiveness, church. That's forgiveness. Jesus knew that man was going to be the one at the foot of the cross. Making fun of him. But Jesus said, I want to heal you anyway. Lord, help us be like Jesus. The Bible said that Peter falls afar off. They're taking Christ to Pilate's Hall. The Bible said that Peter is there. And somebody comes up and says, hey, I seen you with Jesus. Peter said, no, that wasn't me. So he walks on out of the house to the porch. And somebody else said, looks at him and says, hey, I seen you with Jesus. He said, uh-uh, no, that wasn't me. He walks outside, warms by fire. And they said, I seen you with Jesus. Your speech even gives you away. I mean, those if you're with Jesus long enough, you even talk like him. The Bible said, they said, you were with him. Your speech even gives you away. The Bible said, Peter cursed. And he said, I was not with him. I don't know who he is. And about that time, he hears a cock crow. And he knows that now he denied Jesus three times. And he walked away and he wept so sorely and bitterly. But now Jesus Christ, after he's been raised from the dead, he's sitting on the bank of the river. And the Bible said he looked and our disciples was and they were fishing. And he said, hey guys, have you caught anything? They didn't know it was Jesus. And Peter said, no, we ain't caught anything. He said, well, cast your net out on the right side and you'll catch some fish. And the Bible said they cast out their net and they caught a great multitude of fish. And Peter knew who it was there. He put his fisher's coat on. He jumped in the water and he swam to Jesus. I come to tell you, don't let your failure keep you from getting to Jesus. Tell the devil, you're a liar. In the name of Jesus, you will not hinder me in getting to Christ. What stops you? Stand with me. Listen now. Jesus sits down with Peter. He said, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Lord. I do love you. He said, now feed my sheep. A little while later, Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord. I love you. Feed my lambs then. Feed them. A little while later, Jesus comes back and says, Peter, do you really, really love me? Peter said, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Why did he ask him three times? I believe he was letting Peter know, Peter, I forgave you. All those three times you denied me, I forgive you. I forgive you. Somebody needing forgiveness today. I 
every, every head to bow and every eye closed. What hinders you from getting to Jesus? For David, but Travis, said some seats up here. Are you here in this house today? And you feel like this message is for you? Listen to me, sinner. If you're here today and you know should Christ come this hour, you are not ready to meet him. What hinders you? What stops you today from coming to this altar and giving your life to Jesus? Backslider, you've walked away so far from him. What stops you? I'm going to ask you a question. If you're here today and you're lost, you're backslid, you feel like if Jesus comes right now, you're probably not ready to meet him. Would you do me a small favor? I won't come and get you because nobody's even looking. Will you just lift up your hand right now and put it right back down? Church, pray. God bless the hand. There'll be another hand up in this house. God bless that hand. Come on. There'll be another note we'll go up in this house. God dealing with your heart right now. Hallelujah. Children of God, you are dealing with some of these issues today. You have failed God so miserably, and now the devil screams it at you and he brings it up to your remembrance every day of your life. Don't let him do it. What hinders you? Oh, but if you've got things in your life you need forgiveness of, you need to come today. I'm going to ask my sister to sing a verse in the course of a song because I want to make sure we give an invitation first to the lost. If you are here today in this house and you need to be saved, if you're a backslider, I want you to come to this altar right now and let me pray with you. Let this church pray with you.